in this course, there's a possibility for you to use software to look at atoms and molecules. And so the software that we're going to use is called Maestro. And all of you can download Maestro from the Schrodinger website. So the Schrodinger website, uh, you can find it at www.schrodinger.com. You will enter here where you're able to go to the sign in page at the top corner. So if you click sign in, there's also the possibility to register if you want to use this software in the future. It's free for everyone. Now, usually, if you go to uh, register now, then you can just fill in your details. And within a week, you will get the um, approved account so that you can log in. But for this course, we've already created an account for you. So you will find the login details on Studium. And let me just write it up. It's the username is Uppsala 1kb013 at gmail.com. And then the password you will find on Studium. So you can just copy and paste it in and then sign in. Once you've signed in, you can go to platform and then download software to find the software that you're going to use. And among all of these software, there's one called Free Maestro, which is the one that we're going to use for this course. Here you can choose which operating system you're using, if it's uh, Linux, Windows, or Mac. So I have a Windows computer, so I'm going to download that one. And then you have to click these uh, boxes and then click download. So you need a little bit of space uh, on your computer to download this. It's around two gigabytes of space for the installer. And then you'll need a little bit more space for the actual software. So you have to make some space in your computer to do this. Once your download is complete, you can open it up, extract it all, and then once it's extracted, you go to Setup and choose this one where it says Setup rather than Setup Silent. choose from anyways. Click start. It will take around five minutes for everything to install. And once you reach the overall progress that is done, you just go to next. And then you can choose which profile you want to use. I generally use a Bioluminate profile. And depending on which profile you use, some of the buttons might be different. So how you rotate things and pan and so on. But um, as I said, I prefer the bioluminate, so let's go with that one. Um, you can keep all of the checkboxes crossed. Just go to next. And then the installation completed successfully. And since this is an academic version, you don't need to configure any licenses. Uh, so you just go to OK. Be able to see your software. And since I chose a Bioluminate profile, it shows up as Bioluminate. You can go there, wait for it to open up. All 
All right, so once you've opened up the app, you will see this interface here. And it, depending on what you want to do, you will use different parts of this interface. So just briefly, uh, we will talk about where to find everything. So up here is the toolbar. And here you can find various um, options that you can use. You can decide what you want to pick. If you want to pick atoms or if you have larger molecules, you can choose to pick the whole molecule. If you're looking at biomolecules, for instance, then you can pick single residues. Um, here on the side, we have uh, the workspace navigator, and we'll get back to that later. The most important is this black part here, which is what we call the workspace. This is where we will actually see our molecules that we build. And then we have the footer bar, and I'll get back to what we're going to use that for in a little while. To begin with, we want to use this software to look at molecules. So let's start by building a molecule. There's a possibility to start by drawing something like, let's say, a carbon. We draw a carbon. What we get is not just the carbon, and um, but also uh, we will get uh, hydrogens attached to the carbon because the carbon doesn't exist on its own when it's part of a molecule. So here we have a 3D structure. And what we can do is we can change these different atoms for other things using the build um, interface. So here we have a carbon, for instance, and perhaps we want to make some changes. We want to make a fluorine, for instance, or chlorine on the hydrogen. So now we have chloromethane. And so what happens when you change the atoms is that you will also see changes in angles or bond lengths. And so there's a possibility here to, um, to measure different bonds, for instance, which could be interesting. And you do it by going to this menu up here, it says measure and if it doesn't show up in your workspace there is this search bar here where you can actually just write out measure and it will show up so if you click this one you can measure for instance distances between different atoms and so it says pick any two atoms to measure a distance so let's take a look and see if there's any difference between the distance of a carbon and a chlorine compared to a carbon and a hydrogen. So we start by picking the carbon and then the chlorine. And we see that the distance between these two atoms is 1.80 angstroms. All of this is in angstroms. And we do it again between the carbon and the hydrogen. And we'll see that here, there's a shorter di different distance. Uh, it's 1.09 between the carbon and hydrogen. So if you're curious about uh, bond lengths, for instance, and you can look at, uh, at it here in Maestro, you can also look at angles uh, and dihedrals. So let's first take a look at angles, which can be interesting um, depending on which geometric form you're looking at. So here we have, for instance, the angle between the hydrogen, carbon, and another hydrogen is 109.4. And what do you think will be the angle between the hydrogen, carbon, and chlorine? Will it be the same or different? Slightly different, but not much. And if you play around with different molecules, you'll be able to measure many different things to see how these values change as you change the molecule. So this is one of the things that you can do um, using the Maestro interface. 
If you want to make it easier to see the molecule, you can change how it's displayed. I personally like this view, the ball and stick. Usually it makes it easier to see the whole molecule and also to pick the right atom. Now, if instead of the chlorine here, we have a carbon, so we can pick carbon, put a carbon here, then we get ethane. And what we can do is we can again uh, measure the distance between these two carbons. And we'll see that the distance between two carbons with a single bond oops, is 1.54 angstrom. Then what do you think happens when it becomes a double bond, for instance? How do we make a double bond? We can, uh, we can do like this. We can pick this. If we click on the bond itself, you see that suddenly we have more options. And introducing a double bond is done by adding a bond here. So increase the bond order. So instead of a single bond, uh, 1.54 angstroms, what happens when we make it a double bond? So now we've added a bond and we can try again to measure the distance. Do you think that the distance is going to increase or decrease? Sometimes we don't see the changes immediately. So then what we can do is we can pick the whole molecule and then we can choose something called minimize selected atoms. And what happens here, I'm not sure if you saw it, but suddenly the distance decreased between the carbon. So from 1.54 angstroms down to 1.34 angstroms. And this makes sense, right? Based on what you've learned um, during the classes. So what you should think of is how to move things around. And if you hold in the left uh, mouse, left button, then you can rotate the molecule around. And if you hold in the right hand mouse button, then you can zoom in and out. Up here, you can see the name of your structure. And if you want to uh, make different names, you can do that to keep track of them. So this would be uh, methane, for instance. And then down here, you see there's this measurement tool and you can toggle your measurements on and off if you want. So let's say you want to make a simple change to this molecule. You can use, of course, the draw option, but there's also a possibility for you to use these different atoms up here. And so for instance, let's say you want to put in a fluorine, you can do that as well. And there's a possibility to add charges if you want that too. Of course, there's a possibility to also remove atoms if you want. And this is a shorthand button for minimizing selected atoms. So instead of using the menu up here, it's possible to just click all the atoms that you want and then choose minimize. And this is something that, although most of the time, the or sometimes the program will change the geometry and structure immediately after you make the changes, it's a good idea to click this button 
um, after you make any changes, just in case, so that you get the right geometry and make your measurements on the right um, molecule. So this is a way for you to try your hands at modeling, looking at what happens to atoms and molecules as you change certain parameters. And hopefully you will get a better understanding of what molecules look like and how they behave.